Godzilla. King of the Monsters. Godzilla King of the Monsters was released in 2019 and it's out by Michael Darcy and it's a huge cast. So I'm going to try and sum them off the top of my head as best as possible. We have Millie Bobby Brown, Vera Flamingo, Carl Chandler with O.T. Jackson Jr., Bradley Whitford, Sally Hawkins, Ken Wansby and Charles Dance. And basically this film is a follow on from Garth Edwards' Godzilla which came out in 2014 and Kong Skull Island. And basically the plot of the film revolves around Monarch, the monster secret service. And they're seeing that all these Godzilla villains are coming out into the world and improving threats to humanity. These Godzilla villains are Mothra, Rodan and Ghidorah. They're the main three Godzilla villains in this film. But ultimately the main plot is Monarch trying to get Godzilla back out of hiding so he can go face off against these monsters and they get a lot of Monarch running about and talking about what's going on in the plot although you don't really understand it at all. And at the same time, you do got these other plot lines to Millie Brown's character, and Bertha Mingo's character, and Carl Chandler's character, and Neil Charles Dance's character. But if I really went into the plot lines there, I'd probably bore myself. Because in the end, this film is convoluted, it's stupid, it's silly, but you know what? I rather enjoy it. And I'm going to go on to why very, very shortly. But first of all, I'm going to take you guys back to 2019 when I was going to watch this film in the cinema. Now, it's not every day you get to watch a Godzilla film in the cinema. It's not every day you get to watch a monster film in the cinema. I've said this before and I'll say it again. I ha I'm a bit of a sucker for monster movies. You know, like I said, how many times do you get to watch a King Kong movie? How many times do you get to watch a Godzilla movie? Like I said this in my Go Kong Skull Island review. The only King Kong movie before that one was 12 years before. And then I didn't go to the cinema to watch Peter Jackson's King Kong. So Kong Skull Island was the first monster movie I went to go and see in the cinema. And it delivered on what I wanted. I was so happy with it. So, this film is in the same universe as Kong Skull Island. It's in this like monster universe now. But hey, basically, long story short, I was very excited to see Godzilla King of the Monster. I'm a sucker for monster films, and I really like Kong Skull Island, which is in the same universe as this film. But anyway, I got to the cinema, I got my tickets and everything, I got, got to the counter, went up to the cinema, and basically, people are already sitting in my seat. I'm not like one of those people. I don't I don't really care where I sit in the cinema. As long as I have good seats and I can watch the film fine, that's all I care about. So I don't really care about that so much. But, you know, they were good seats, but they were sitting in my seat, so I didn't bother them. And I just went to go and sit in these other seats, which weren't as good, but, you know, I could still sit in the cinema fine. These seats that I sat in were the back of the cinema. After the opening scene in the film, this guy in the corner of my eye got his phone out and had his phone out on full brightness for the next two hours of the film. So I had one of the worst cinema experiences of my life. Life. Because honestly, I was sitting there trying to watch the film, and every time I looked at the screen, every time I tried to watch the film, I could just see this bright little light in the corner of my eye from this guy's phone screen. I was like, Ugh! I was trying to watch the film properly. So I said to myself, after all, God's looking the monsters in the cinema the first time, I can't view that film. I can't view that film until I see it again, either in the cinema or on DVD. And I didn't go back to see it in the cinema because I didn't have time to back then. But I did buy it on DVD eventually, and last night I sat down to watch this film. And you know what? Like Kong Skull Island, it's a film with just what it says in the tin. It's a Godzilla film. If people went into this film expecting, you know, interesting characters and a plot that makes sense, what were you thinking? This is a Godzilla film in the end. Logic goes out the window. Logic goes out the window in all these monster films. You know, we're not going to go into these monster films and expect the next masterpiece. You're not going to go into these monster films and expect, you know, things to actually make sense. Godzilla doesn't exist. King Kong doesn't exist. I mean, I love the characters. I really do. But, honestly, monster films are so stupid. They really are. Godzilla doesn't really make sense at all. So if people go into this film expecting logic and expecting characters to actually be interesting, I don't know what you're thinking because honestly, even Garth Edwards is Godzilla, which I like quite a lot. I mean, I don't think it's a fantastic film, but I think it's a good film. Even that film has not that interesting characters. I'm not really interested in Aaron Taylor Johnson's character in that film at all. I think his character is very generic, and I also I don't really like Aaron Taylor Johnson's performance in that film at all, but I'm not going to get into that. I talked a lot about that in my Garth Edwards Godzilla review, but in this film, the characters are even less interesting. Honestly, I don't know how they did it. I really don't, but somehow the characters are unbelievably boring. I mean, I I hate to use that phrase, but they are, and they're so two-dimensional, and just so bland. The way I refer to the characters is literally through the famous actors in this film, like, okay, that's Millie Bobby Brown, that's Vera Flamingo, that's Carl Chandler, that's Charles Dance, Charles Dance is in the film, I really like Charles Dance, he's actually my favourite part of the film, though he's not in it that much, I really like him in the film, and the performances are fine, got nothing wrong with performances, I actually quite like Charles Dance in the film, but that's probably because I like Charles Dance quite a lot, but the performances are all fine, you know, there's quite a lot of shouting between characters and stuff like that, which would probably be a monster film, but yeah, performances are fine, but the characters are so boring and two-dimensional, and so generic, you're not interested in what they're saying, and you're not interested and what's going on with them and the film focuses a lot on them like you'll go to the big Godzilla fight between Godzilla and Ghidorah and then I'll cut back to them and they'll be like oh my god what's been happening Ghidorah's now flying that way okay Ronan's now flying that way I'm like why should we care can we just see it happen instead start talking about it and the screenplay of the film 
It's so bad. It's not. It's it's only just first draft standard. I mean, I'm not even saying it is going to be first draft standard because it is really, really bad. The script for this film. Honestly, there's actually moments in the film where characters will talk to each other as if it's via like a FaceTime. Yeah, they will explain the plot to each other with a PowerPoint presentation or a video. And I'm actually joking. That's how they talk to each other in this film. Like there's one moment in particular where Vera Flamingo's character literally FaceTimes the rest of the cast. I'm not even joking. This is in the film. And basically, <laughs> it's through FaceTime and she just gets this video presentation about how. God's actually going to save humanity. I'm like, Jesus Christ, this is so stupid. But what else would you expect from a Godzilla film? Honestly, if you went into this film thinking it was going to make sense, why? <laughs> These are monster films in the end. They're not meant to make sense. Honestly, what are monster films are dying for? Big monster fights. And you know what? That's what Godzilla King of the Monsters delivers on. No, I'm not even going to sit here and say Godzilla King of the Monsters is even a good film. It's messy, it's stupid, it's convoluted, it's all over the place. And like I said, characters will literally explain the plot to each other with a PowerPoint presentation or a video over FaceTime. And I'm kind of sitting there thinking, why do we need this? And there is a bit too much focus on the characters as well. Like there's one moment in particular where you see Godzilla and Ghidorah fight for the second time. And literally the camera just pans away down to Kyle Shandler's character. He starts shouting familiarly while around the character. It's just been like, I'd much rather watch the monster fight going on there. Can you not just go back to that? And the musical score for the film isn't that great either. It's by Bear McGrave. I mean, it's not a bad score. I'm not saying that, but it's just a lot of moments in the film where you just get that bomb, bomb, bomb. Honestly, I can't think of a main memorable theme from Godzilla King of the Monsters. I remember, you know, the main theme from Garbage's Godzilla was really good by Alexander Despot. That's a really good score for that film. I remember it quite well, because honestly, just the opening scene of the film just depends on the score, and that works really well. At the same time, though, I didn't really talk about my Kong's Island review, but Kong's Island actually has somewhat of a good score as well by Henry Jackman in that film, which actually has some interesting themes in there. But Ben McGreevy's score on this film is just a bit like, and it's just like, oh, God, I did no distinctive musical themes in this film. But saying the music's bad, it's just saying it's very generic and... I couldn't pinpoint a main theme in this film at all. So yeah, the film's convoluted, it's stupid, it's all over the place. The performances are fine, but the characters are ultimately very, very boring and very bland. And the score, the musical score, isn't that great either. But you know what? Like I said, this film does what it says on the tin. It's a Godzilla film. It's, it's a Godzilla King of the Monsters film. This film delivers on what you would expect from a Godzilla film. Literally, it's in the name, Godzilla King of the Monsters. If you weren't going to the film expecting huge Godzilla fights with more than one Godzilla monster, what you expect expecting? Because literally, Godzilla fights all these monsters in the film. And that's what I expected. That's why I wasn't going to the film thinking, ah, oh, I bet all these monsters won't fight Godzilla. I bet this film is just solely focused on Godzilla once again. And you know what? I was fine with that. Because it literally felt like with this film, the people who made this film looked at the main criticism from Galvanus' Godzilla, which was that Godzilla wasn't in that film enough. And by the way, I didn't agree with that criticism. I actually kind of liked that Godzilla is only in that film for, what, 10, 12 minutes? Because actually that builds a bit of intrigue on him. And when Godzilla is on screen in that film, you feel like you've earned that moment. But in this film, the actual moments in the film are just like, oh, Godzilla's back. Hey, Godzilla's there. It's Godzilla. It's just better Godzilla monster. There's Mothra. There's Godzilla. There's Ronan. Oh, there's Mothra. There's Godzilla. There's Ronan. Oh, you did so many Godzilla monsters. And actually, there is actually one in the film. It's like, there's a monster. 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 Hey, you want another monster? Hey, there's another monster. There's literally a moment in the film we just have like 10 monsters all gathered around Godzilla. Not to give too much away but you might have guessed that already but there's actually a moment in the film where it's like you've literally taken the biggest person to do the first film ran with it but ignored the characters and you know what i'm fine with that this is a godzilla film at the end i'm a sucker for monster movies i don't care if they're bad king kong vs godzilla the 1962 film is hilariously bad it's great and that's what joey pleasant for me and at the same time that's kind of how i feel about godzilla king the monsters that part of the film last night when i watched it i literally just laughed at what the characters were saying but you know what I didn't care, because it was the living what I wanted from a Godzilla film. I didn't go into this film thinking, ah, I'm going to get a very interesting character. No, I went into this film hoping for Godzilla fights, and that's what it delivered on. You know, when you do get those Godzilla fights in the film, the visuals are spectacular. The cinematography is great. You can clearly tell that a lot of people have spent a lot of time working on the visuals for the film, and they really do pay off, in my opinion. And this film has some epic monster fights. And I like that you got to see more of the Godzilla villains. Like, I actually kind of like the idea of a good doll with this three-headed monster. That's a pretty good idea, in my opinion. And some visually spectacular moments in the film. But at the same time, though, yes, the cards are bland. It is a very stupid film. It is all over the place. And it is just one of those films in the end, which 
I must admit, it's a bit forgetful, but at the same time though, I'd be lying if I said I enjoy this film. I really do, because I think I got to the point with this film, I just kind of got to a point where I just didn't care about the stupidity of the film. I just went along and tried to enjoy it, and you know what? I did. I found a lot of enjoyment in this film. By no means is this even a good film. I'm not even saying that. I think, I think this film is, you know, actually quite bad, but actually... I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy it. You know, it's one of those films, it's so stupid, it's so silly, it's so all over the place, it so doesn't make any sense at all that, you know what, I actually rather enjoyed it. And so for that reason, I'm going to say that Godzilla, King of the Monsters, I had a really enjoyable time in this film. And I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it a, a 5 out of 10. Like I said, by no means is this even a good film. I actually think this is a quite a bad film, but you know what, I enjoy it. I got to a point in this film where... I think it was, I think one of the characters was explaining the plot to another character via PowerPoint presentation and I literally just went, hmm, let's just go along with it and that's what I did. I actually found quite a bit of enjoyment in this film. It does what it says in the tin. It's a Godzilla film. It's a Godzilla film called Godzilla King of the Monsters. What else do you expect from this film? And actually, I rather enjoyed it. Even so, there are way too many monsters in the film and there are way too many bland characters that, you know, the film focuses on a bit too much. I didn't care. It's a Godzilla film. I actually quite enjoyed it. So for that reason, I haven't quite recovered from the stupidity of it yet. But I'm going to say that Godzilla, King of the Monsters, it's a 5 out of 10 for me. Anyway guys, what do you think of Godzilla, King of the Monsters? Please do comment down below and let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Anyway guys, thank you as always for watching, if you haven't yet, please do click down below and like and subscribe on this video and look forward to many more, both film and TV's coming very soon on this channel. See you guys again soon, bye bye for now, bye!